Hello everyone and welcome to Sutton's Days and to this week's January Pantry Challenge. Yes, you know, we've been having a lot of fun. I'm seeing a lot of really great comments about what you guys are doing with the January Pantry Challenge. So let me know how you're doing down in the comment section below, um, whether or not the action plans have been of any help, whether or not you're following along, um, and how you think you're doing. I know I'm seeing some people are saving a bunch of money and some people are finding holes in their pantries. So that's what the January Pantry Challenge does. It teaches us to use what we have and to find out what we have and to figure out how to be creative with it and find out where we might be missing some things because it happens. It always does for anybody. It doesn't matter how long you've been doing this, you will find holes in your preps, okay? So the first week we did inventory, right? And it's like the dreaded thing to do to go in there and try to figure out, oh gosh, you know, but once you get in there and you bite the bullet and you start taking notes of everything that you've got, it's eye-opening. I mean, even I, even I found things where I'm like, wow, well, I thought I had a little bit more of that than I actually do. So it's a good thing to get in there regularly, quarterly, and make sure that you do have what you think you have. Um, the next week, we talked about menu planning and figuring out different ways to incorporate menu planning into your regular routine. It helps you keep track of what you have, to use what you have. It helps get rid of that dreaded question, what do you want for dinner, right? And then last week, um, I gave you how I figure out a year's worth of food for our household and how I calculated that and kind of, you know, filled in the holes there. And I saw a lot of really great comments about that video, so I appreciate that, getting your feedback and hearing about how you do it for you and yours. This week, we're gonna chat a little bit about DIY kitchen. Now, I'm gonna have a playlist that I'm gonna link down below and in the iCard above, okay? But this week, stick with me this week, because we're gonna be coming at you a whole bunch, and we're gonna be bringing you different videos on how you can make some of some things yourself. There's a lot of times where you can't get to the store or there's a shortage, right? And so the stores don't have what you're looking for. So being able to figure out how to make your own products is just as good as being able to stock up on the store-bought ones. Now every household is different. So you have to look at the kind of products that you use and see if there's a way that you can learn to make them yourselves. Now, I know that we don't buy mustard anymore. I make our mustard now. And it's super easy, very convenient, and it tastes a whole lot better than the store-bought stuff. So I make our mustard because the ingredients that I use to make the mustard last a lot longer on the shelf than the store-bought containers of mustard. You can make your own mayonnaise. You can make your own, like, Miracle Whip, okay? Um, you can make all your own seasoning packets. You can make your own Bisquick. You can make your own all kinds of things. So let me know in the comment section below what kind of items do you use that you make yourself instead of buying the commercial brand. I would love to hear that. This week, we're going to be looking at a whole bunch of different things. There's going to be about a video every single day uh, with a DIY kitchen item to hopefully inspire you to make your own because we don't always have to rely on what is in the stores you know sometimes we can get the ingredients that we need to make our own stuff so that we don't have to be reliant on the delivery systems that are out there on the shortages that are occurring we should never have to be concerned about that because we have what we need in our pantries to get by now, one of the things that I learned at the beginning of 2020 was that I like heavy whipping cream in my coffee. I knew that. I didn't learn that. Um, but not being able to go to the stores at the beginning of all of that, right, um, I'm, I was a little panicked about running out of heavy whipping cream. So I started doing some research. I asked around. I asked one of my friends from Facebook, and I said, okay, what was that heavy whipping cream powder that you picked up? And so she told me, and of course, she couldn't get it at the time. But when I could finally get it, I made sure to stock up on some of it. And, you know, there's Hoosier Hills, there's Anthony's. Those are both very good brands. The thing that you're going to find, though, with like the heavy whipping cream powder, um, while it's shelf stable, it doesn't come out exactly like, and it does have a slightly different flavor than the normal heavy whipping cream that you get. I don't use um, the, like, uh, international brand or the coffee meat brand of, you know, coffee creamers. I like just plain old heavy whipping cream in my coffee. And 
being able to replicate that without having to worry about going to the store was something that became important to me. So I figured out, okay, I have to have that stuff on hand to be able to use. But now that I've got that stuff on hand, what kind of other really great stuff can I make with that? Learning how to make your own brownies instead of buying the box mix. Oh my goodness. It's a world of difference. It's cost effective. It stores well on your pantry shelves. It's fantastic. So our challenge this week is going to be to see what we can do, what we can make, so that we no longer have to worry about going out to buy it. Now, I know everybody's busy. You, you don't have to tell me about busy, okay? But sometimes if you spend just a couple hours on a weekend or an hour on a weekend and make up some pre-made gravy mixes or make up some pre-made seasoning mixes or, you know, that kind of thing, uh, make up some mustard, you, ha you have enough for over a month. So for that little bit of time, you no longer have to go to the store and buy their product with all of their extra ingredients like MSG or too much salt or ingredients that we can't pronounce, right? You can have that same thing in your house right there that's much better for you that you control what goes into. And it's just, it's an enjoyable experience. It's just so much fun to make it yourself and know that I did this. This is me. I got it, you know? So... I highly encourage trying different ways to do this. You may, you know, you may run into a few speed bumps where you go, I am really used to Miracle Whip. I am really used to Miracle Whip, you know? So am I, am I going to love my homemade mayonnaise? Mm, no, probably not. But maybe you can learn to make your own homemade Miracle Whip and it will taste very similar, only you don't have to rely on, you know, the stuff that you get from the store. You don't have to have the extra packaging. We are filling up these landfills with some of the most ridiculous things. So, I mean, the less packaging and, and junk that you can bring into the house that you then have to put out of the house, you know, make sure that what you bring in serves a purpose and can actually create more of what you're looking for for less money. It's huge money savings. And for me, time is money. Time is the one commodity I can never get back. And so it's very valuable to me. I, you know, I have a very high dollar amount attributed to my time. So if I'm going to spend a half an hour making Fiesta Ranch Mix, what? Yes, you can make your own Fiesta Ranch Mix. I know there is uh, a recipe collection in our Etsy store, uh, hashtag Fiesta Ranch World Domination, because if you know me at all, you know I love Fiesta Ranch Mix, but I learned how to make it myself. And this is the best recipe. You cannot find it anywhere else on the internet. It is absolutely fantastic. And I guarantee you it tastes just like Fiesta Ranch Mix. You can control the sodium on this one. That's the big one, and there's no MSG. So you can check out that if you like. But we love Fiesta Ranch Mix. So being able to make that up myself, not have to worry about being able to find it, because I know so many of you have told me that you can't find it in your stores anywhere. Why pay the ridiculous price that some people are trying to get for it on Amazon, right? Make your own. Now, you do have to order something online to make it, but it's still, you're going to be able to make a ton of it with those ingredients. It's super simple. It tastes exactly like Fiesta Ranch Mix. So... Taking the time to find the recipes that are actually working, that actually do taste like the authentic original product that you fell in love with, that is something that you really need to, to work on and hunt for because I've seen some ridiculous, <laughs> I've seen some ridiculous recipes for it that don't taste anything like the real Fiesta Ranch Mix. And there's do-it-yourself ranch seasoning mixes. Lots of people make their own salad dressing, so super easy much more gratifying and you always have it on hand that way if you have the ingredients in your house which is easy enough to do if you're stocking a pantry so the diy kitchen not only saves you money it saves you time and it gives you a sense of accomplishment and the ingredients always last longer than the actual commercial brand so i encourage you to check that out i put an action plan down below to kind of kick you off on all of it please join us this whole week as we bring you all kinds of do-it-yourself items for the kitchen uh you know and you can even make your own cleaning products it's so easy you guys it's so easy that you will save so much money it's just fantastic what do you make for your diy kitchen what kind of things do you make yourself instead of buying the commercially made products okay gravy gravy packets i mean it's just crazy the gravy packets how much money we spend on those and it's so simple and so cheap to make your own and you can make it in bulk so it's there when you want it Yes, that's what you want to do. Check out the playlist with the DIY Kitchen and check out this week as we add more to that playlist for you and yours. Until next time, everybody, be safe.